Hi everyone, I hope you are having an amazing day. Once again, this is Jenrox Educator TV, your host for today. Welcome back to EP Science Virtual Class. Are you guys ready? Alright, let's do this. For this video, we are going to talk about the interactions between organisms. What do you mean by the word interactions? Before we move to our next lesson, we are going to have a short review regarding what have you learned with our first topic regarding interdependence of living organisms. Here are a few words that we are going to mention like species, population, community, habitat, and ecosystem, and also ecology, ecologist. And we also discuss about the different kinds of ecosystem. So say for example, marine ecosystem, aquatic ecosystem, terrestrial ecosystem. So those are habitat where those organisms live and grow together and how do they interact, all right? To its own environment. So we discussed about how organisms create a balanced ecosystem. Remember that we have a natural ecosystem in which all those organisms live together. Some other animals or organisms live in a terrestrial area, right? Or in a land area, wetland, grassland, forest, and mountains, right? Some other animals lived in the sea, river, streams, lakes. What about humans? Humans live and grow in that terrestrial ecosystem or land area. But we take our source of food. It could be in a grassland, from the animals, or Plants. We also discussed about the different factors on how organisms create a balanced ecosystem. Say for example, number of individuals, number of populations, composition of gases and other elements, and the available sources like water, air, soil, and all other nutrients. These are all part of our recap for today regarding about the interdependence of organisms. Now, for this lesson, we will talk about the interactions between organisms. So, we already have a few concepts or idea how organisms live in a particular habitat. What do you think how organisms interact to its own ecosystem or environment? How do they live? Why some animals live with humans? Why do animals compete food from the other animals? You may wonder how a population of organisms interacts one another within a particular habitat, right? In one particular community. So how do they live? How do they take those sources of food from the other ecosystem? So that could be a question right now. How do they interact between other organisms in order to live and survive? Okay, so that's the reason why most organisms, animal organisms, human beings, right? We are considered as consumers, first or secondary consumers. Please remember, no man is an island. So do you know that kind of idiomatic expression? No one can live alone, right? Organisms cannot live alone. Do you believe in that saying? Of course, absolutely yes. All of us, all other organisms, they interact with each other in many ways. So how do they respond within the environment according to climatic conditions? When it comes to different seasons, right? The main cause of interaction 
when we talk about the word interaction means a communication how to respond okay from animals within the animals in one ecosystem from animals within humans in a particular ecosystem or habitat which they live together where do they take food sources of nutrients and energy in order to live and grow so they need food shelter and protection so what do they need these are food shelter and protection all right so interactions between organisms are important because they control the size of populations in the community next create a balance and stable environment so there is what we call a cycle how the life of an organism survive right in such particular community or ecosystem all right since we talk about food remember that only plants can manufacture their own food because of the unique activity of plants we consider it as producers that is what we call again producers that is the main function of plant plants produce food for every organisms all right let us remember that there are animals that only eat plants and they are considered as herbivores there are organisms that eat plant and animals and that is what we call omnivores and who are they of course humans there are other organisms that eat only animals and that is what we call carnivores and what are those examples of a carnivores this time we will talk about the interactions between organisms what are the types of interactions between organisms please take note some important words what are those types of interactions between organisms one prey and predator prey and predator next symbiosis symbiosis under symbiosis that is what you call give and take relationship that is from the word symbiotic relationship right it is what we call symbiosis right under symbiosis there are components one commensalism commensalism two mutualism mutualism three parasitism parasitism so when we talk about that kind of components under symbiotic relationship that means to say there are one or more no? organisms involved within that particular situations under interaction within the environment all right then the other one is competition competition okay so you got it what do you mean by the word prey or predator or in other word that is what we call predation right so what is in your own idea when we talk about predator or prey what do you think so you might think another examples or situations regarding predation okay so another example there is a crocodile and crocodile catches chicken okay so that is an example of prey and predator let's talk further what do you mean by prey and predator interaction remember it is an interaction of one of the common relationship within a community like for example in a forest 
community. A predator is an animal that captures and eats other animals. Right? The predators are usually bigger than the prey. In a prey predator relationship, the predator benefits a lot and the prey losses. Okay? Examples of prey predator relationships are okay, tiger and deer. Now I'm going to ask you which one is considered as predator between tiger and the deer? And what about the prey? Let us remember there are three important interaction of symbiotic relationship. These are commensalism, parasitism, and mutualism. Commensalism is a relationship between two organisms in which one organism, the commensal, right? Commensal, benefits from another, which is the host. For this example, in commensalism is remora fish and the shark. Right. So, which one plays the role of host and which one is commensal? Alright. The remora fish acts as commensal. It is often found attached under a shark, okay, within the belly. It feeds on the scraps of food left by the shark without harming the shark, right? So, this is a shark. And this is a remora fish. Another example of commensalism is the sea anemone and the clown fish. Okay, so which one is host and which one is commensal? Now, next type of symbiosis is parasitism. Parasitism, right? So what is parasitism interaction? A parasitism is a relationship between two types of organism in which one organism benefits and the other one is harmed under parasitism. That is what we call parasites and host, right? So what are those? The parasite and the host. So what does that mean? Parasites plays a role that benefit by living in or within the host, right? On the other hand, host is being harmed by the parasites. Here's the example of parasitism between tapeworm that lives in a human intestine, right? Tapeworm is a parasite that obtains food and shelter from humans, right? Human is a host and the tapeworm is parasite. You understand that? So therefore, host was being harmed, okay? Human intestine by losing nutrients to the parasite. Host loses weight and becomes weak. The last type of symbiosis is what we call mutualism. Mutualism. Do you have a mutual understanding or a mutual feelings with your friend, your best friend, or someone else? What do you mean by the word mutualism? Mutualism is an interaction between two different organisms that benefit both. So, nobody harm or losses. Be shared together. Alright? Neither species or an organism can survive. Say, for example, your mother takes care your baby sister or brother. Let's do focus about the different examples of mutualism based on nature. Alright? Lichens consist of fungi and algae living together, right? So the algae produce food and the fungi provide shelter. So that is one of the best example of mutualism. So they do sharing, 
of their own nutrients. Now, here's the last one. We have competition. What's that? Competition. From the word compete, what does that mean? So, especially for animals and humans. So, there is what we call competition. In such particular event, in your study, we also have competition when it comes to our intellect and performance. Competition is a type of interaction among organisms living in the same habitat in which it competes for its basic needs. Organisms compete with each other for food, minerals, light, water, shelter, or mate. Competition may exist between individuals of the same species and between individuals in different species. Right? So there are two types of competition. We have intraspecific competition and the other one is interspecific competition. So what are the common difference between the two? Intraspecific competition is a competition between individuals of the same species. And the interspecific competition is a competition between individual of different species right so remember interspecific competition and organisms that compete with the same species and interspecific competition an organism that compete with different species let us remember that wherever or whichever part of the world we live in any ecosystem, when a population grows too large, organisms of the same species will compete with each other for their basic needs. The organism which is stronger and better is able to adapt to the changes in the environment and it will survive whereas the weaker one will die. This reduces the size of population Therefore, interactions between organisms are a natural way to control the size of a population and help to maintain balanced ecosystem. That is why some organisms live longer. Other organisms might die. So, that is a natural cycle about the interactions of organisms within the ecosystem. All right, this is the end of our lesson for today regarding about the interactions of organism in different ecosystem. I hope you learned something from this. And guys, please don't forget to answer your quizzes and assignment at the Google Classroom in the AP website. All right? Thank you so much. Remember, stay home, stay safe. Enjoy learning. All right? Bye-bye.